it's William West Hopper from The Real DC Car Guy, and I'm here with Frank No from East Coast Pikmin. So Frank, tell us a little bit about these trucks. Well, these are Chinese-made uh, low-speed vehicles. As I said, they come from China. Uh, we import them and license them and allow people to drive uh, on U.S. roads or on the farm or a campus uh, under the low-speed vehicle regulations. So tell me about the low-speed re uh, regulations first. What is that? Uh, it's a federal standard. That uh, Some of the basics are the vehicles are limited to 25 miles an hour. Okay. Uh, they can't be on roads more than 35 miles an hour. Okay. Um, and that's it's a basic federal standard. Then every state decides whether or not to follow it or not. And almost all of them do. Okay. Are there any specific states that do not follow it that we can say Maryland? We're in the we're in the state of Maryland now, but we know Maryland follows it. Maryland correct? follows it. Uh, we've we had some trouble with the state of New York and California. Okay. Only because they wanted some additional requirements for registration, but otherwise uh, all the numbers are the same. Very good. So these go are to be driven on roads that are under 35 miles an hour. Do they go more than 35 miles an hour? No, we we had to make them uh, regulated to 25 miles per hour. So they're speed limited to, Correct. to, to that. All right. And so. that's not mechanical. It's like a more of an EEPROM programming okay. function. Sounds good. All right. Well, we're going to take a look at these Pikmin trucks a little closer. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. So we have uh, two different models here. We have the two-door pickup truck. So you want to talk a little bit about that? So that's the first vehicle that, that was made in China. That's what's been made the most of. Uh, this, this company, before any were brought to the U.S., probably had 40,000 vehicles operating in China. Uh, they're, they're for utility, so they're, they're not as comfortable as because the springs are tougher because they carry a heavier load. They'll, the bed can carry three-quarter ton, so they're work vehicles. They're, used, they're probably better use on a farm, uh, anywhere that you're going to haul a lot of stuff. Compared to the four doors, which we call the passenger versus the classic, uh, the springs are softer. They have less capacity overall as far as total weight, but they're a much more comfortable drive. It's a softer ride, carries four people spaciously. Uh, still has a bit of a bed and also has a bed extender. So what is payload on each of these? The two-door is three-quarter ton, 1,500 pounds. All right. I've driven it with that much and it probably could have handled more. Okay. Um, I think uh, the bed is only good for 600 pounds in this. And then and four passengers. And four passengers. Based on 200 pounds a passenger or something, something like that. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. You said that they're uh, operated by lead acid batteries, but there is a lithium battery option to that? Exactly. The space is the same. So uh, currently they, they come with six uh, lead acid batteries. Uh, for about $3,000 more, we have the lithium option, which is going to give it a lifetime, make it a lifetime maintenance free vehicle. Uh, batteries are located in this one. You said under the back seat, but in that one, they're under the front seat? Correct. There's a bench seat in the back with the batteries on this one, and the, the standard bench seat is there. Very six, cool. Six batteries, 72-volt uh, system. Are the lithium batteries the same? Would they be the same? Battery? Lithium is a lot lighter, Okay. Uh, but, but we only have the same space available, so you're going to get a, less weight. And we're going to go take it out for a drive, so let's go uh, have a look at it on the road. So we're here, we're driving out in the Pikmin. It's very quiet. We'll go down the road and then we'll go among the airplanes. Okay. See so here a little uh, wine of, a gear wine in, in here. It rides a little rough because it's not big suspension, but it's you know, pretty good for. This is, is, this is the smooth one. <laughs> yeah, but it's still, I mean, it's, got, it's a little truck, so yeah. you're not gonna get a whole lot of, it's not going to be a hole. So we're up at 20 miles an hour, going up to 21. And what's the battery level on this right now? I only, it's only about 50%, so okay. I'm feeling a little bit of a reduction of ex the acceleration. It's showing 68 volts, 72 being the, the top. So now we're out on a highway that's got, uh, or on a street, we're a city street with a 25 mile an hour limit, speed limit on it. And this vehicle has all the lights and all that's required for that. So tell me about what what are you feeling on driving dynamics? How does it compare to a um, say a golf cart? Oh much more stable than a golf cart. Um, 
it, it feels more like a real vehicle than a golf cart. It, okay. It feels stronger. You know, it has a solid steel chassis. You know, golf carts are kind of bolted together halfway. Um, you feel that strength for sure. The acceleration's a little bit better. It's a unibody construction. It just yeah, feels, well, it feels stronger. It feels pretty strong, you know, solid back in here. Yeah. So is this, so where do you see these being used? Well, initially, uh, before we got uh, LSV certification, the, the focus was a place like this, an airport, um, college campuses, any industrial complex, any farm, um, anywhere that they use vehicles inside a building as well, with, without emissions, of course. Right. Um, so, and then we come with a different models. Like this could be used at an airport to transport VIPs, uh, whereas the two door can be used for a maintenance crew or something like that. You can outfit them with mm -hmm. toolboxes or tools in the back. And anywhere that's uh, interested in helping the environment. A lot of a lot of farms I'm learning uh, are having solar arrays now and they have excess energy and they they would rather put that into a vehicle than to not use it at all. Now, are, do you have any intimidation issues that they tr bigger car vehicles try to intimidate you? I did at first. I've, I've learned just to hold my ground. You know, 25 miles an hour, even when it's the speed limit, you know, people are trying to do 35 and 40. So I, I feel like I do hold people up sometimes and I'm a considerate person. I don't want to block anyone, but I've kind of learned to ignore it. You know, I'm doing the speed limit. They can't complain. <laughs> and what do the police say about this? I've been hoping somebody would pull me over and they haven't yet. Mm. I, I, I was hoping someone would pull me over and question if it was even legal and I was ready, you know, I'm ready to show my documents and, and even have uh, the regulations on my phone somewhere. So just talk to me about the design of them there pretty simple it's got a hood up front now is there a motor up there no the motor is right on the on the drive axle uh, there's just one one transaxle and it connects directly so Frank this is uh, the little two-door Pikmin truck and you said this is the first one you got yep um, so tell me how this one differs from this one over here and the one thing I notice is that the bed is bigger yeah, it's, uh, gosh, I forget the dimensions. It looks like about a five, not quite a six foot bed. Uh, you're not gonna haul, uh, you know, a full plywood sheet in it, obviously. But you could probably get maybe three bales of hay in there stacked up, you know, something like that. Absolutely. So, so it's not, it's more of a volume issue than a weight issue. Okay. The weight's not gonna. And there's something that's really cool about this bed. You wanna show it to us? Well, unlike, a, you know, a, a traditional truck, uh, it's uh, obviously the tailgate comes down. This is an older one. It normally, you can't see it, but normally you can stop it this way. This one just hangs down. But then the nice part is we can fold the sides down as well on both sides or, or just remove them. So that you have a basically a flat bed. Yep. That the bed is the size of a European pallet, if that makes sense. Reminiscent of the old Volkswagen van pickup trucks. Absolutely. And then you can easily slide stuff on and off of here. So and I, we sell the two the two door truck with um, various box configurations. Yeah, I saw those uh, mission ready vehicles mm -hmm. that were there. That's very a chilled cool. box or just a standard cargo box. Oh, that, and that would be great for uh, for a food truck or something. You know, working a, a fair. Absolutely, but then the the box versions, um, yeah, a lot of that's how they use them in China, largely. You know, just as right. urban delivery. Cool. So let's talk about the the side look of the of the difference between this one, which is the four door version, as opposed to the two door version. You sort of have a little higher bed line he, uh, here for the wall. It doesn't fold down. Um, almost kind of has a um, Honda Ridgeline look to it. I'm hearing Honda Ridgeline or that Jeep with Ford, Ford seats. The Jeep um, Gladiator pickup truck. Kind of has Gladiator. that same angle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I wanted to buy one of these trucks, yes. what would be my out the door price right now? Oh, that's good because I can't give a solid answer because of shipping. Okay. If you order one today, I'm gonna, I tell you this one would be around thirteen five to 14000 Without shipping costs? That that is that's the price right now shipped to the West Coast. Okay. So there's going to be additional shipping charges, duty with, charges, or that, that includes all that. Okay. Figure twenty grand. That's yeah. pretty high. Fifteen. It's, yeah. Well, no, well, 
But hold on. Okay. It, 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 okay, I'm good for you. But I've got 20 grand in my pocket. Uh huh. Trick me out. Give me a tricked out truck. If you're going to be that liberal, I'm going to trick you out beyond 20. Okay. Because I'm going to give you four wheel drive. I'm going to give you lithium batteries. I'm going to jack it up. I'm going to give you bigger tires. I'm going to give you front push bar. I'm going to give you a roll cage. Um, I'm going to give you some back steel light protectors. Maybe some flares out for the bigger tires. Would that be 30? No, it'd still be less than 30. The uh, the four wheel drive is supposed to cost when it's finally delivered about 19,000. Okay. Um, that's and then with the lithium batteries, add about 3,000. What are the website? The PikmanUSA.com. Uh, East Coast Pikmin. I have a couple websites. My favorite one that I just picked up is called Undercompensating.com. You All can right. figure out why. We won't go there. <laughs> you pilots, that's the way it is. And if you can hear the planes going, you know that uh, we're at an airport. PikminUSA.com. And what about social media? Social media, I use a different tag. Uh, I used East Coast Pikmin on Instagram. Uh, Facebook? Facebook is the Pikmin USA. Cool. Oh, very cool. Well, that's an interesting story. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Frank, for talking to us today about the uh, Pikmin vehicle. It's really a lot of fun. We want to thank you for this opportunity to show you the Pikmin from East Coast Pikmin here in Frederick, Maryland. We'll put a link in the story down below if you're interested in getting your own Pikmin.